talking about the body. He's talking about us. Amen. No more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of man and cunning craftiness. See, men, they're cunning. They're crafty. You better be solid in your foundation. Amen. Or they'll, they'll deceive you right out of your salvation. It says, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up unto Him, into Him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. I told you a while ago, Christ is the head. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Now, what he's saying is that the body of Christ is made up of many, many people. Each one of those people represent a different member. Amen. As far as an example, he's saying, you know, that just like you have fingers, thumbs, toes, legs, feet, the body of Christ has members. Uh, just like we talked about the assembly line. Different people doing different works. The body of Christ has many. And you fit. You fit into your place. Amen. In the body of Christ. He has a place for you today in this body. Amen? Some of the church might want to cast you off, but Jesus, don't, you're part of His body. I don't, you know, my, my right hand may not like my left hand, but what I say to that is tough. We're keeping it. Amen? 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 All of us are members. All of us are part of the body. Time for you to quit making excuses and be a part of the body. Amen? Amen? You are one of the members. He would say in Romans 12 and 4, For as we have many members in one body, all members have not the same office. Told you a while ago, you may not be able to preach, but there's a million things to do besides preach. So we being many are one body in Christ, and everyone members one of another. Now go with me. I'm closing on this. 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. We're going to start in the 14th verse. 1 Corinthians 12 and 14. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Are you listening to me this morning? If the ear shall say, because I am not of the eye, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Oh, yes it is. If the song leader says, well, because I'm not the preacher, does that make the song leader not a part of the body of Christ? If the lay member sitting in the pew, that is unlike every one of us, are a light to somebody, I wish I could drill that in your head this morning. If you say, well, because I don't do this and I don't do that, well, I just ain't part of it. Oh, yes you are. I told you, you've used that excuse long enough. There is something for you to do. There are many positions that need to be filled. The unemployment rate is plenty high in the church today. Amen? And it's high because we got members that do not want to do the work that is set before them. Listen to this. I'm trying to hurry. If the whole body were an eye, and I'm in verse 17. Oh, listen to this. i got to slow down. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole body were hearing, where were the smelling? You know what he's saying? If the whole body was just one part, just one calling, just one office, then how would the other things get done? If I came in here this morning and I was just a big eyeball, I wouldn't be able to hear. I wouldn't be able to smell. If you get your nose cut off this morning, your ear can't smell for you. Your eye can't smell for you. Oh my goodness, I wish I could teach this morning. We are a part of the body and every one is important. Put your, take your finger like this and put it right here and say, I am important. I am important. You are important today. You are a part of the body of Christ. And the sooner we learn that, 
the better off we'll be and the more work that we can get done. I told you last week, if I'm just carrying around dead weight because my left, my right side don't want to do nothing or my left side don't want to do nothing, it makes it hard on the rest of the body because my part of it ain't doing its job. It makes it hard on somebody else when you don't do the job that you're supposed to be doing in Christ. Amen? Amen. We got all kinds of positions open. Amen? Amen. Where am I at? Verse 18. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased Him. Oh, I could preach right there on that. Everybody ain't called to preach, but we got some people preaching that ain't called. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. We got some people preaching that ain't called. Oh, they like the looks of the spotlight. They like the fact that He got up there every morning in front of everybody. Yeah, well, it won't take you very long to find out it ain't all it cut up to be. Amen. 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 It ain't all it's cut up to be. There's a whole lot more weeping and gnashing of teeth that goes with it than being in the spotlight. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you're going to do it right, it is anyway. Mm -hmm. As it hath pleased Him. Verse 19. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now there are many members, yet but one body. I'll listen to this. This is what I'm going to get to. The 21st verse. The eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. But that's what we do. In our natural body, we can see that clearly. That my hands can't say to my feet, I don't need y'all. And we'll try walking for a while, buddy. Got to have your feet. If your feet say, I don't need you, hands. Yet the body of Christ treats its members like that. Amen. <clears throat> Every one of us are guilty of treating somebody better than somebody else. Amen. If this morning you had two people leave your church, one of them was the guy who never brushes his teeth, ain't had a bath in two months. Never gives nothing in the offering. He shows up every Sunday. Then you got that guy that comes in and he's slick. And he drops a 50 or more in the offering plate. And they both disappear. They're both gone. Wonder which one the church would worry about the most. Uh -oh. Slick. Slick Willie. <laughs> Amen. We got to go see. And then, and listen, some of the church, I, I hope this ain't hitting you as morning, but it is. I can't help it. Some of the church would hope the guy that never brushes his teeth ever comes back. Oh, no, he's here. He's here. Amen? Come on. That's the way we treat the body. But when I asked you this morning what part of your body you want to get rid of, I didn't have no takers. Whether I mentioned the pinky or the toe or the nose or the ear or the eyeball, nobody wanted to get rid of nothing. But we feel so many times that there are members in the body of Christ that are dispensable. We don't need them. Oh, yes, you do. You do need them. Amen. I don't care if it's the nose hairs. You need them. That's your filter, man. Amen. That's your filter. As you get older, it gets thicker. <laughs> but that's your filter. Got to have your nose hairs. You don't think too much about them. At least you got plugged one. Amen. I'm telling you. I wish you could get I wish you could sink your teeth because that's a piece of steak right there. Mm -hmm. How that we feel that we can get rid of members in the body, yet we don't want to get rid of none of these members right here. That's why this morning's message is called Unwanted Body Parts, because that's <laughs> the way the church treats a lot of the members of the body of Christ. Right. Unwanted. I should have the same welcome for Stinky Pete as I do for Slick Willie. Right, sure Amen. 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 I'll tell you this on myself. I have never <clears throat> caught myself thinking, oh no, that guy don't smell good, so I'm going to go over on this aisle in the natural. But tell you some people, when I see them in Walmart, if I can, I avoid them like the plague. Because their tongue's long enough to stand at the podium and lick my van. Amen. Amen. I agree. Somebody always has done them wrong. Somebody always is living worse than they're living. 
Somebody always ain't going to heaven, but they're going to hell. So I avoid them kind of people. But God help me never, my goodness, never to avoid those. And just because they're not as good looking, just because they don't smell as sweet, they're still a body, a part of the body of Christ. Amen? They still have a soul. And Paul would go on to say that nay, much more, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. Did you hear that? The parts of the body that seem to be less worthy, that seem to be more feeble, that seem to be not as comely, not as not as beautiful, not as attractive, they are even more necessary. Amen. Oh, it's time we realize that everybody in this thing is important. Amen. Everybody has a job to do. You may not miss your pastor today as much as you do the man who cleans the commode. But sooner or later, you'll miss the man that cleans the commode. Amen. Because you'll go to the bathroom and not be able to go in for the stench. Because that's part that needs to be done. Amen. A lot of jobs just don't have any takers. Amen. Go back. Everybody that's listening, I want to give you a copy of last Sunday's because we talked about the man who hired the workers. He went out and he found people at dawn, Brother Bill, and he hired them. And I think he went out, Brother Sleeve was the third hour, and the sixth hour, and the ninth hour. And every time he went out, he found people standing idle in the marketplace. That's where the church is at today. Souls dying and going to hell, and the church stands idle while the work goes undone. But we are a part, I hope I have showed you enough anyway to get you to realize you are a part of the work. You are a part of the body. There is something for you to do. Get off the couch and do it. Because men and women are going to hell every day while the church does its own thing instead of doing God's thing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Paul would go on to expound more on this that I've been preaching about as long as you're going to let me, I think. <clears throat> Hallelujah. He talks about how there's division in the body. He says there should be no schism in the body and that the members should have the same care one for another. Oh, this is going to hit you. It says whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. If one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. If one of us hurt, the rest of us should be hurting. If one of us are hungry, the rest of us should feel that. If one of us are living in a house without no light, somebody ought to care enough to try and get something done about it. Somebody ought to care when you're hurting. Because when your little toe hurts, your whole body is concerned with that. So this morning, if you're hurting, your brother and sister on the pew beside you should be concerned about that. He said, if one part hurts, the rest should hurt. If one rejoices, the rest should rejoice. That means if God blesses me, you ain't supposed to get jealous. Amen. Amen. You're supposed to rejoice that God blessed me. Amen. And I'm supposed to bless you. Uh, my goodness. We need to bless one another. Amen. Pray for one another. Be the light that we're supposed to be. I hope I've said something this morning to pique your interest enough to say, God, you mean there really is something for me to do? Yes, there is. Amen. Somebody else have something this morning before we go.